appreciate you being here. And I know we've still got several that are sick, and some are still a little skittish. Uh, but I thought, you know, we got we got to try to tread water and just a little bit this week. We got to get back sometime, and maybe next week and the next Sunday it'll get a little better. But it's good to see you in the Lord's house today. I know we got a lot of prayer requests, but we got some praise reports too. Amen. That young lady right there is still with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. She had about 104 temperature, was in bed for 11 days before she ever went to the hospital and uh, had double pneumonia. And just, you just never know. And here she is in the Lord's house and uh, playing piano this morning. We thank God for that. And Brother Bernie Goldsmith had his surgery Friday. And the doctors were very pleased. Everything went well, and he got home yesterday. And we praise God for that. I know they're watching this morning. So I know it's easy to get uh, uh, kind of bogged down in all, everybody that's sick, but we also need to give God glory and give God praise for healing those that have been sick and bringing those back to us. So I'm glad that you're here in the Lord's house this morning. How about we sing a little bit this morning? That'd be all right. 113 in your songbook, glory to his name, 113, if you'll stand with me, and we'll sing this morning, 113, sing it with me now on the first, down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing for sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name, I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. was the blood applied glory to his name come to this fountain so rich cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet plunge in today and be made complete glory to Good, sing it now. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. His name. That's good singing. 139 years I spent in vanity and pride but thank god one day we made a trip to calvary amen and we're saved this morning by god's good grace and thank god for his goodness and his mercy 139 now i love this old hymn sing it with me on that first voice get you a good breath and let's sing it now years i spent in vanity and pride caring not my lord was crucified Crucified, knowing not it was for me, he died on Calvary. 
and grace was free pardon there was multiplied there my burden soul found liberty I'm going to ask just the ladies to sing on that second stanza. You sopranos and altos on that second verse. Lift your voice. We'll join you on the chorus. Ready? Here we go. By God's word. Sing it. Good. Till. Good singing, everybody now. Lift your voice. Mercy there was great and grace was free par. To me there my burden so found liberty. Let's hear those big booming baritones and basses on this third verse. Fellas, lift your voice now. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing. Good, good singing, everybody. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span. The mercy there was great and grace was free. Part and there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty at the And all God's people said amen. You can be seated. Keep your songbook out. We'll sing another one here in just a moment and give time for those that are watching uh, by way of our live stream. I appreciate Brother Paul. He's manning all of that up there this morning, and I appreciate him uh, doing that and making that available to those that aren't able to be here today. And uh, we want to greet them and uh, let them know. I know there's some that aren't able to be here and uh, we certainly want to remember them in prayer and to let them know how much we love them, how much we miss them, and uh, pray that the Lord will bring them back very, very, very soon. But I've got to be honest with you, I was watching. There was a ball game on last night. Somebody, uh, who was that played? Uh, it was like a JV game. Nobody cared about that game, amen. Uh, but it was Georgia and, Georgia and Clemson, wasn't it? Georgia and Clemson. Uh, somebody asked me what I thought about George. I said, well, somebody's got to finish second in the SEC. Somebody say amen right there. Roll Tide, praise God. But anyways, uh, I, I, they, they spanned the audience, and there was 71,000 people in that stadium. And uh, when they got up close, I didn't see any, many people with masks on, people sitting shoulder to shoulder and arm to arm. And that right there kind of tells you all you need to know where people's hearts and minds are at right now. And uh, it ought to be in the things of God because this thing's a winding down. I, I don't know what news channel you've been watching and I don't know what they've been telling you, but I know what this book says. And if you'll read this book, it'll let you know this thing's a wrapping up and we're fixing to get out of here, hallelujah. And uh, I'm glad today that we're able to gather together in this place. You know, I shared this with Stephanie the other day, and I'm just going to throw this out there. And far as I know, we, this is, I know we've had some individual cases here and there up before this, this. Well, we've had our own pandemic, really, in a couple of weeks. But I know we've had different ones. That, but even with all that broke out a couple of weeks ago, far as I know, Brother Dorsey, nobody got it here. I mean, they may have had it when they came here, but they may have got it. But nobody, as far as I know, nobody got it here. 
I don't think that's an accident. Solomon, when they built the temple, Solomon, when he dedicated it, this was his prayer. Lord, your name is in this house. And I believe God's going to protect his house. I believe this is the safest place to be in the house of God. You, you, you may disagree, and that's okay, but I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that is an accident, far as I know, and I'll stand corrected if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, nobody has gotten it here. I believe God's going to take care of his house and his people. Amen. And I'm thankful that we have a God we can trust and we can rely on. It's good to see Miss Joan this morning. She scared me to death Friday. She called me and said, I'm going to the hospital. My arms are hurting. And it's like it was when I had my last heart attack. And Lord, help. I, I thought we was going to do a funeral today. Miss Joan, you scared me to death. But I'm glad to see you this morning. Praise the Lord. And I'm and, uh, thankful the Lord answered prayer and, and touched you. I'm so thankful for that. And to uh, thank God for all that he's done. I know we've got many uh, and we're going to mention them in a moment. I'll get Brother Jerry to come do that here in a minute. Uh, but is there any spoken prayer requests? Maybe you have an update. Uh, maybe something's happened that we don't know about in the last few days. Of course, we've got our normal folk that are sick, and we're certainly going to remember them. But maybe there's something that's come up, and we need to be aware of it so we can get it on the prayer list. So if anybody has a spoken need of prayer, yes, sir. his heart. Good. Yes, sir. <coughs> Amen. <clears throat> Thank you for the update. Yes, sir. Thank you for the update. I had no idea they he had come home, so we definitely definitely need to pray for the Lord give him grace to cross the river and to give Miss Amen. Give Miss Ann Lee grace to uh, comfort him and be there for him. Not much she can do, but being there means a lot, don't it? Amen. Yes, sir. How you feeling, Brother Larry? Terrible? Amen. Well, you, good. Bless your heart. Amen. We're glad to see you, brother. Sure have been praying for you. How's Christy? She better? Okay. Is she still positive or no? Okay, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, right, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we sure will. Remember Miss Jessica Richards, I don't know if everybody knows, but we got word uh, either Friday or yesterday uh, but Jessica had tested positive and apparently probably picked it up at school there at, uh, I think she goes to East Paulding, if I remember right. But anyways, uh, so they're all in quarantine. Steve and Angie Spencer, they're all uh, staying in quarantine just to be safe. So remember, remember Jessica and all those that will be affected. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Amen. That's a good place to stay, ain't it? Praise God. Amen. I had a buddy of mine, he said, that's where I had all the Christmas gifts in the oven. Amen. Some of y'all a little slow, you'll get that after a while. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, sir. And so remember her, do remember Bernie, he's home. 
uh, but continue to pray for a full recovery. Doctors are pleased with what happened. It was a very serious surgery, uh, but they're very pleased with the outcome. So continue to remember him in prayer. And remember Miss Shirley, uh, Brother Terry's wife, and uh, she's been very weak and, and hasn't had much of an appetite. So pray uh, for Shirley as well. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I was fixing to mention that Miss Lisa has been moved from the hospital to a rehab facility and uh, trying to get a little stronger, her strength built up. So remember her uh, in prayer. And if you think of it, I know it's it, everybody's busy, and I know there's been a lot of sickness. But if you think of it, uh, just take a minute to shoot somebody a text, or maybe a phone call, or a message on Facebook or whatever. And just let them know you're thinking of them. I'm telling you, it goes a long way. I can't tell you how many people have told me in the last couple of weeks, uh, when you're quarantined and you can't go nowhere and you look at the same four walls every day and you wonder if you're living or if you're dying, it's a very depressing time. And just to know that somebody cares enough to say, hey, I'm praying for you. Is there anything we can do? I'm telling you, that goes a long, long way. See, the devil's a liar, and he'll get you by yourself and isolated, and the devil will get in your mind, and he'll try to convince you nobody cares. Nobody's checked on you. That church don't care about you. They're not interested. But the devil's a liar. He's a father of lies. Somebody help me this morning. Amen. I know how he works. And, uh, but we can, we can combat that a little bit by letting folk know, hey, we are thinking of you. We miss you. We love you. We're praying for you. And I, being honest, I felt helpless in the last couple of weeks because all I could do was pray. I couldn't go to the hospital. And a lot of people don't want you coming to their house. If you do, you stand out in the yard and talk 25 feet away. There's just not much you can do. I felt helpless. But I'm glad to know that we can still pray. And I don't want to minimize prayer. Some people say, well, that's the least I could do. No, no. Prayer is the most you could do for somebody. Prayer gets you in touch with a God who can do what a doctor can't do, what medicine can't do. But it's still we like to feel like we can have a part to reach out and, and touch somebody. And right now we're not able to do that. So let somebody know that you're thinking of them. Look around today. You see somebody that's not here? Send them a message this week. I know there's many that can't be here, but let them know you miss them. Let them know you're thinking of them. That goes along. I, I know this. If it was you and if it was me, we'd appreciate somebody taking time and thinking of us enough to let us know. Now, when I'm sick, don't say amen, Sister Kim, but when I'm sick, I'm not a good patient. I don't want to be around anybody. I don't want anybody coming. I just don't. That's just me. Just let me wallow in my misery. Amen. I don't want to be around. But everybody's got a phone. And there's no contact with the phone. And everybody likes to hear that little ding, ding. And you look at it with excitement like, oh, did I win the lottery? Praise God. And you pick it up. And just to hear a brother or sister say, hey, I love you. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. That goes a long way. So take time this week. Let's do that. I know we got a lot of people that are sick, but let's take time and do our best to try to reach out this week and let somebody know. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, brother. You're right. Amen. Wow. What about that? Wow. What about that? 
I always heard never trust anybody who puts their hands in your mouth. I, I mean, I've always heard that. I don't know. Now you've kind of planted a little doubt in everybody's mind about the dentist. Amen. You need tooth pulled, you come. We got pliers. We got drills. Amen. We got rope. We'll tie it on a handle. Bless God, we'll jank it out of there. Amen. But uh, praise the Lord, Brother Larry. I'm, I'm glad you're doing better. Pray your strength comes each day. Gets a little better. Gets a little more. And I tell you what, when I'm 80, I pray I get around like Brother Larry gets around. I just pray I'm not sitting in a chair drooling all over myself when I'm 86. I pray I can still come to church. Can I get a witness right there? Thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Anybody else this morning? Remember Miss Patsy Hawford? I talked to Brother Richard, thought she was doing a little better, and then she gets up and oxygen drops and just very weak. So she's got kind of a double whammy. She was doing those treatments and then got COVID. So pray for Miss Patsy. Uh, uh, remember her brother Charles Thomas uh, had a bad night last night, and uh, pray for Brother Charles. He's not on a ventilator yet, but that's probably coming if they so choose. So remember Brother Charles, Brother Robert. Uh, Miss Janice, Janice is doing a little better, but she said Brother Robert's still pretty sick. So remember him uh, in prayer. And the Wrights, talked to them yesterday. And they're both doing a little bit better. I know they're watching this morning. And remember them in prayer. Uh, they said, Lord willing, if we don't take a turn, we'll try to be back next Sunday. Uh, but they are doing better. So we thank God for that. Uh, the Haney's, remember Miss Deborah uh, in prayer. She had one of those infusions. Uh, the antibody infusions and uh, believe that it's doing helping her a little bit, but she's still got a long way to go. So remember her uh, in prayer. Miss Robin Tyndall, she's at home, but still very weak, gets winded easy, very tired. Uh, so remember her uh, in prayer when you pray as well. All right. Anybody else have one this morning? Brother Jerry, I took your job, but I'll have you pray. How's that sound? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yep. We've got some friends. I pastored them 20-some-odd 20, 20 years ago. I've married their daughter, and, and uh, they still call me their pastor. And uh, they're both very healthy, a little bit older than us, maybe late 50s. Both of them have been fully vaccinated. And he's in a ventilator, on a ventilator, in uh, Palmetto Hospital in Greenville, South Carolina. And she's been admitted with double pneumonia. And they've both been fully vaccinated. Uh, they both had it their first go around and got it again, and uh, but they are making a little progress. Her daughter's keeping us updated and doing a little better day by day. Uh, but please pray uh, for them. And it's a scary time. I mean, it just is. A lot of folk are just just cautious. They're just kind of uh, uh, skeptical uh, right now. Uh, but I, I still come back to what this book says. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. You will not get your faith built up by watching Fox News. Your faith will not get strengthened by reading Facebook 24 hours a day. There's only one thing that feeds the inner man and builds your faith, and it's called the Word of God. And I think if we spent as much or more time in this as we do with everything else, I think our faith would be a little stronger. And I've made my mind up, I will not let them dictate my life. I'm not going to necessarily go just because they say that that's the way it is. Because if you do, if you've been vaccinated according to them, you've got a short time to live. How many, how many long, three to five years, what they say now, if you've been vaccinated. That's what they say. How many of you know that Bible says your days, God already has your days numbered? It don't matter what Fauci says. Somebody say amen. But people buying that hook, line, and sinker because they watch it this right here. And what we're doing this morning is what builds our faith. And I pray that we'll let God do his work in our hearts and make us what we need to be in this dark, depressing time. None of us have ever lived through anything like this. Anybody lived through? Well, some of you probably been through World War II, maybe. But nobody's lived through the Great Depression, as far as I know, World War I. Nobody's ever gone through this kind of pandemic before. This is all new to all of us. But it's not new to God. 
God's still on the throne. He's still in charge. And we know that these things have to be to set the stage for what's coming next. Amen. And I'm thankful. I do not think, I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure that that shot does not have the mark of the beast in it. But I believe it's setting the stage. Because if they make it mandatory to have a job or to go eat or to go to the store, whatever, if they make it a requirement, what it will do, it will desensitize people to where when that man of perdition raises up and says, I've got the answer for all of it, and the mark is made available, people won't think anything about it anymore because this is just setting the stage for what is to come. But if you're saved this morning, you ought to shout on this, we're not going to be here. Amen. When that mark comes available, we're going to be watching from the glory world. And I'm thankful this morning we have that hope, aren't you? Praise the Lord. Well, before I get going, I'll get fired up here in a minute. I, I, better, I better put it back in downshift a little bit. Amen. If we got any more prayer requests or any other needs, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. He will. Amen. Amen. He will. You know what's sad about that with Miss Lita's job that basically was forced out because she would not take the vaccine? That's a Christian organization. So-called Bible-based Christian organization. And because of her stand, had scripture to stand on, and even had medical advice because of Brother Preston Miss Lita, Lord willing, one day want to have a child. And there is talk that that could interfere with that. So because even a Christian organization, because of her stand, basically forced her out because of that. Now, if a Christian organization would do that to somebody, what do you think a pagan secular organization will do? But we've got to make our mind up whether or not we're going to stand. And if you wait till the time comes, it'll be too late. You've got to make your mind up now. I'm, going, I'm not telling you to get the shot. I'm not telling you not to get the shot. You settle that in your heart between you and the Lord, and I'll love you either way. You know what the devil's done? He's done exactly what he wants to done because you got people that are vaccinated. They look down on people that are not vaccinated and vice versa. God's not the author of confusion, according to 1 Corinthians 14, 33. God's not in any of that. So if God's not doing it, who do you think's doing it? The devil is causing division even among the people of God over a vaccine, over a virus, and yet we still are commanded to love one another. I've not told one person not to get the shot. I have not. I would tell you, talk to your doctor. Get the facts. And then pray and ask God, and if he settles it in your heart to get it, by all means you get it. People have asked, well, what are you going to do? Well, I give them my stand, but I'm not telling anybody what to do. What not. And I refuse to break fellowship over somebody that did get it or didn't get it. It's craziness in this day. Now, you, you think we would wake up to that. God's not in any of that stuff. We love one another, and we... Fellowship with one, regardless of where somebody stands on that. But I do believe we're going to have to, we're going to be faced and going to be forced to take a stand one way or another. And I think we're just seeing the beginning of it. I pray we'll stand on what's right and what that Bible says. And I know if we do, God will bless that and God will honor that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remember our country. Remember our leaders. Remember those folks in Afghanistan, even some of our own people that are still over there. I pray for them. My heart goes out to them. And I, I, I shudder to think that this great country would forget about those of our own people that are over there. We need to pray for them and pray for Christian believers over there that are being persecuted and suffering for their faith. And we certainly need to pray God's protection around that area. Anybody else this morning?
by way of prayer request. If you're watching, you have one. If you'll put that on our page or however that works in the comments, if you'll let us know, I promise you we'll get it. And we'll add it on our prayer list. We want to agree together with you, whatever you're facing, uh, whatever prayer request that you have. Yes, sir, Brother Lane. Yeah, I'm getting ready to mention Brother Danny. Yep. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Amen. Remember, brother, I mean, thank you for mentioning brother Danny. He was next on the list. Martha Foster, continue to remember her in prayer. Remember Miss BJ in prayer. The Lord had strengthened her. And uh, remember uh, brother Jerry Pittman that comes with the Mullinax and sits with Granny Mullinax. Uh, he did test positive, but he's doing a little bit better day by day. So pray for brother Jerry as well this morning. Anybody else have a need? Miss Wendy, I know, sick. I don't think it's COVID, uh, but pray for Sister Wendy. Pray the Lord to touch her and uh, raise her up. Anybody else this morning need a prayer, a word of testimony? It's Labor Day weekend. How many of you got to labor tomorrow? Anybody have to labor tomorrow? Labor on Labor Day? Brother Preston, you got to work tomorrow, do you? So much for a holiday, huh? Yeah, work around the house. Amen. I told you about them honeydews. You didn't believe me, did you? I told you, son. Yeah, you found out, hadn't you? Praise God. Yes, sir. Anybody else? I want to thank Brother Terry. As several of you mentioned this pulpit. It was it was in my Sunday school class up here to the left of the sound booth there. And I got to looking at it. I thought, man, that's too pretty to be in a Sunday. And I like preaching behind a cross anyway. I always have. My favorite was preaching behind the cross, and a man had, uh, Brother Dorsey, he had cut out about a 12 by 12 spot in the floor and put an old Bible in that and put plexiglass. So when I preached, I was behind the cross standing on the Word. But I've always enjoyed preaching behind the cross, and Brother Terry uh, helped the other day get this microphone drilled through to where everything, and, and I appreciate uh, all the work that he put into that. And it really turned out good. I'm thankful uh, for that. We still got the old pulpit. We just set it in one of the front rooms there. But I really appreciate all the work that, uh, that went into this. And I pray God will use this pulpit for many years to come as the word goes forth and souls will be saved. That's the message that we have. It's the message of the cross. We have no other message, Brother Billy. It's the preaching of the cross, Paul said. To them that perish, it's foolishness, but to us which are saved, it's the power of God. And so I'm thankful that uh, all the work that went in to get all that together. Amen. Anybody else this morning have a need of prayer? Brother Jerry, won't you come up here behind this cross and take us to the throne? Amen. Amen. Ask God to touch each one of these that are, that are sick there.
remember, remember Sister Betty. Father, we're grateful, Lord. We're grateful, Lord, to be in the house of God once again today, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, giving us a heart that misses the house of God, Lord. I pray, Lord, uh, for this Christian nation, Lord, that's gathered together, together today, Lord, whether it be here at New Genesis or across this land, Lord, uh, that have gathered together in the house of God to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that the division that may be going on, Lord, that the division that the that the devil may be causing in the house of God, Lord, that you would rid that of the church, Lord, that you would unify the, the Christian nation, the body of Christ, Lord, that all might come together, Lord, to do your work, to be in your service, to be uh, uh, who you would have them to be for you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the breath of life, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being able to, to uh, breathe a, a breath in and a breathe a breath out this morning, Lord. And I pray uh, for those, Lord, that are struggling today, Lord, with that, whether whether it be uh, COVID or whether it be uh, bronchitis or whether it be just lung disease or whatever the case may be, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you heal them, Lord, yes. that you bless every breath that they take, Lord, that uh, they might heal and be a, a witness to, to uh, glorify you and what you've done in their lives, Lord. And, Lord, uh, we, we take this time, Lord, to humble ourselves before you, Lord, to, and ask you to hear our cry once again, Lord, as we as we pray publicly, Lord, as we pray vocally, Lord, as we as we pray to a three times holy God, Lord, Amen. we lay these petitions before the feet of Jesus Christ, Lord, our intercessor, Lord, the one who went to Calvary, Lord, uh, as the Son of God, Lord, and sacrificed His love, His uh, His love and His uh, and His body and His life for us, Lord, that we might be free from the burden of sin, Lord, and we thank you for salvation through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord, in our lives, Lord. We pray for those with cancer today, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you heal them, Lord, that your will will be done in their, their lives. We, we pray this morning, Lord, for our nation, for our president, for our Congress. We pray, Lord, for the Supreme Court of the United States, Lord, that all that's said and done in Washington, Lord, might be done according to the statutes and the precepts and the commands of the Word of God, Lord, that the, that the people of God that represent the, the, the people of America may stand up in that Congress, may stand up in that Supreme Court, Amen. may stand up uh, for the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that the, that the things of God may, may rule this country once Amen. again, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that that would be your will. We thank you, Lord, uh, for the opportunity to to uh, bow before you, Lord, and ask you, Lord, uh, pray to you, Lord, plea with you, Lord, to rid us, rid us of this pestilence, Lord. Yes. Lord, show your mighty power. Uh, show uh, mankind what only you can do, Lord. And we pray that in Jesus' name this morning, Lord. I pray uh, your healing touch on each and every one that's sick. I pray, Lord, uh, uh, your healing touch on each and every one that's spiritually sick today, Lord. Those that have become apathetic, Lord, to the house of God and to the word of God and to the people of God, I pray, Lord, that you'd prick their hearts today, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord, that they might realize that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that you're the answer to all things, Lord. Thank you for what you've done, Lord, what you're going to do, and what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's tell you what we'll say. Let's change and let's do 180. One blessed assurance. We'll save that other one till tonight. 181 blessed assurance. Jesus, I think that's a fitting song to sing in this day and hour. A lot of people don't have any assurance, but we that know the Lord have some assurance, don't we? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. 181. Let's sing it out this morning now. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, God, born of his spirit. Story. Oh, yes, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Praise the 
praising my Savior all the day long. On that last stanza now, perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. And all God's people said amen. That's good singing. Take your Bible, be found in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 38 this morning, and we'll share what the Lord uh, put on my heart. In fact, some time ago, probably a couple of weeks ago, the Lord gave me this thought, and uh, I, I want to share it with you uh, this morning. Isaiah chapter number 38, and uh, my text is verse number 14, but I tell you what we're going to do. I want to read starting in verse number 1, and uh, that way you can get the whole context of what's going on now, and when it comes to verse 14, you'll have an idea why things are as they are. If you're able and willing to stand, do that. Let's give honor and reverence to the reading of the Word of God, Isaiah chapter number 38, and look with me beginning in verse number 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. How'd you like somebody to show up at your house in the morning and say, you better get right because you're going to die. That's exactly what Isaiah did to Hezekiah. What did Hezekiah do? He turned his face toward the wall and he prayed unto the Lord and said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Aren't you glad we have a God that hears and answers prayer? I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward, so the sun returned, ten degrees by which degrees it was gone down. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness, I said in the day, in the cutting off of my days, I shall go down to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord, in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as a shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life. He will cut me off with pining sickness from day. Even tonight wilt thou make an end of me. I reckon till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones from day. Even tonight wilt thou make an end of me. Like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes fail with looking upward. O oh Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for 
me. Do you see that word there in that phrase? Undertake for me. Say that with me. Undertake for me. With the help of the Lord this morning, I want to preach on this thought. Forget 911. Call the undertaker. Lord, undertake for, how many of you know this morning the Lord is our undertaker? He's the one that undertakes for us. He's the one that meets our need. He's the one that takes care of this body. He is the one that we call upon and thank God he will undertake our case and he's able to do what nobody else can do. Amen? You may be seated. Father, thank you again for the privilege to be in thy house today. I pray you now you'll take the word of God as it's opened our hearts. I pray, God, that you'll empower me, use me to be just your mouthpiece that you can speak through this morning, not only to these in this room, but those that may be watching wherever they may be. They need an undertaker, and I pray you would undertake whatever they're going through today, and I pray you'd show yourself strong on their behalf, and we'll thank you, and we'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name, and for Jesus' sake, amen. And amen. I, when I was thinking about the undertaker the other morning, my mind went back many, many years ago. I was a 15-year-old boy. I'd grown eight inches one summer. In the eighth grade, I was five foot eight and weighed 240 pounds. I was just, I was about as round as I was tall. But the summer of that, between my eighth and my ninth grade year, I grew about eight inches and of course slimmed down and I thought that I could whip the world. I, my daddy stood about six eight and now I was just a few inches, Brother Jerry, from looking him uh, eyeball to eyeball. And I don't know how your parents raised you. I, I don't know if they disciplined you. I, I don't know if they spanked you or whatever they did, but I know that they believed in it in my house. Amen. And they wasn't time out in my house. It was knock you out in my house. Praise God. And I remember one day I, I got into trouble and my daddy had an old razor strap that our barber gave to him. I don't believe that barber was saved, amen. He gave my daddy that razor strap and that's what he used when it come to discipline in my house. And I remember Brother Dorsey, my daddy lit in on me and I'd had about all I could take and I finally stood my ground and I said, oh man, you're going to have to do more than that. How many of you know that was the first and the last time I ever called my daddy, oh man, amen. I mean, he lit into me and it was all over. I went and picked up the phone and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm a calling the cops. He sat down. I said, what are you doing? He said, as soon as you hang up, I'm calling the undertaker. Amen. And I knew he meant exactly what he was a saying. I'm glad this morning, thank God, when it comes to the cares of life and troubles and problems and trials of that we go through, brother. I'm glad, thank God, we got an undertaker. I'm not talking about the one at the funeral home. I'm talking about the God of heaven who is able to undertake in my life and undertake in your life and do what nobody else can do. Hezekiah needed an undertaker. In fact, we read about it in these verses. You'll notice that in the text beginning in verse 1, it was a dire situation. The Bible said that Isaiah came to Hezekiah's house one day. Most believe that Hezekiah was probably in a middle-aged man. He had reigned for 14 years by now. And Hezekiah shows, or Isaiah shows up one day. He didn't come to talk about the, of the ball game. He didn't come to talk about of the weather forecast. But he comes to Hezekiah's house and he gives him some very grim and very sad, sobering news. What does he tell him? In verse 1, he tells him, to get your house ready. He said, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. You know what he's saying? Hezekiah, you're sick. Your disease is terminal. You're not going to get any better, and you better get your affairs in order and get your house uh, ready. I wondered, Brother Preston, I'm not sure, but I wonder if when he said thine house, if he didn't have in mind Hezekiah's son by the name of Manasseh. The Bible called Manasseh Hezekiah's 
son, the most wicked king in the history of the nation. For 52 years, he had destroyed the godly reign of his father. He had even offered his own sons as an offering to the god Moloch as he passed them up through the fire. And God sentenced the entire nation to captivity because of the sins of one man by the name of Manasseh. And I've wondered, maybe God was giving Hezekiah a little snapshot, Brother Larry, of what it was going to be like after Hezekiah uh, is dead and gone. And so it's a clear warning. You better get your house ready. You better do all you can do to try to shine the light. And is that not a charge to us today? We better get our house in order. I can't make my kids and my family follow God, but I can live in a way that they would want to follow God. I can't make them come to church, but they ought to know that on Sunday and on Wednesday, if they come to my house, I'm going to the house of God. Amen. Hey, I can't make them do anything, but I can live my life in such a way that I can show them the way that they ought to go. Get thy house in order. He says, get your house ready. Look at verse 1 again. He not only says, get your house ready, but get your heart right. He says, thou shalt die and not live. I don't know how many of you had any appointments this week. Maybe you had an appointment with your doctor. Maybe you had an appointment with your, with your hair salon people, nail salon people. Maybe you had an appointment at the mechanic. I don't know. But I know this. I know you can reschedule just about every appointment that you make with the doctor, with the hairstylist, with the mechanic. If something comes up, you can call and you can reschedule but I tell you, there's one appointment that is set. You can't do anything about it. What is it, preacher? Hebrews 9, 27. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Brother Job said, man that's born a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down and fleeth away as a shadow and continueth not. Brother James said, your life is just a vapor. It's here for a little while, and then it vanisheth away. The truth of the matter is, unless Jesus Christ Christ comes in the clouds of glory. None of us are getting out of here alive. We've all got an appointment that every one of us is going to keep one day. The death angel's coming to my house. One day the death angel's coming to your house. So we better get our house ready and we better get our heart right because one of these days we're checking out of here. I know in this day and hour nobody likes to hear what I'm about to share with you but it's it's the truth, and I've got a charge to tell you what the Bible says. If you study this Bible, Brother Lane, you'll find out there are five main ways God judged in the days of the Scripture. One was war. These are not in any particular order, Brother Larry, but one was war. Then there was pestilence or disease. We're calling it a pandemic right now. The Bible refers to it as a plague, as pestilence. It was judgment. Then there was famine. Then there were natural disasters. Remember number 16, God opened up the earth and swallowed up the sons of Korah? You're talking about an earthquake. And number five was wicked leaders. That's how God sent judgment in the days of this Bible. War, famine, disease, natural disasters, and God gave nations wicked leaders as a form of judgment. Now, we may not have famine right now, although there, are fa there is famine in other parts of the world. But look at our country. War. You think just cause that, that the, we got out of Afghanistan, you think everything's just fine? I'm telling you, that Muslim crowd over there that hates God and hates Christians and hates this Bible, they're planning another attack and it's a coming to our home soil. We'll be in war and there'll be no peace until the Prince of Peace comes to rule and to reign. War. Pestilence. Here we are, 18 months in a pandemic. Natural disasters, earthquakes happening in northern Virginia. Hurricane, what was its name? Ida hits in New Orleans again. 
If I was New Orleans, I'd cancel Mardi Gras. I think I'd get my heart right. I think I'd get my house in order, wouldn't you? And wicked leaders. Look what we've got right now. Now, I, I showed Miss Stephanie this the other day, and, and, and uh, I, I, I've got a little, I, I, it's really not an app, it's a website, but it's called Worldometer. What it does is it, it shows data around the clock. It's constantly going. It's a worldometer. It shows the deaths. I mean, you, I'll show it to you. It just constantly moves, constantly going. There have been 4 million people that have died of COVID. Now, this is worldwide. I think there's 700,000 in this country. But 4 million people that have died of COVID in the last 18 months. But did you know since January 1st, there have been 28 million abortions? But all you hear about is 4,000 people dying of COVID. Nobody's saying anything about we've shed innocent blood. 28 million times. Why? Because God's going to get this thing ready. God's going to judge this mess, and we better get our house ready, and we better get our heart right. Because one of these days, there's an appointment, Brother Lane, we're all going to keep. And whether you're ready or not, you know Jesus or you don't, you're going to meet him. If you're saved, you're going to meet him at the Bema Seat of Christ. If you're not saved, you're going to meet him at the Great White Throne Judgment. You're, but you're going to either meet him as your Savior or as your judge. But mark it down, you're going to meet him one day. So it'd be good today, wouldn't it, to get our house ready and get our heart right? Because Jesus and judgment are coming. I better move on. I, I, I think I lost some of you right there. You say, preacher, I need to hear something good. No, you need to hear the truth, what you need to hear. You, you can go home and watch that fellow out there in Houston. He'll tell you what you want to hear. Amen. But hey, as, a man, as a man of God, our charge, Brother Jerry, Brother Billy, Brother Paul, Brother Dorsey, Brother Lane, our charge is to preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, exhort, reprove with all long suffering. For the time will come when they will heap to themselves itching. Bible said that they'd get itching ears, but it never told me I had to scratch them. Amen. Just preach the word. Tell people what the Bible says. Tell people what God says and God says get your house ready and get your heart right because Jesus is coming one day it was a dire situation number two look at verse four from that dire situation came a desperate supplication what did Hezekiah do the Bible said in verse two he turned his face toward the wall he did what we all ought to do when we get bad news he turned and talked to the Lord about it and in verse number 2, 3, 4, and 5, he begins to remind God, God, I've tried to live for you. I've tried to honor you. I've tried to serve you. I've tried to do that which was good and right in your sight. And look what God did in response to Hezekiah's prayer. In verse number 4 and 5, God heard him. The Bible said that he came to Hezekiah and said, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. And I will add unto thy life 15 years. I'm not telling you that when you get sick, God will put 15 years on the end of your life but I am telling you we have a God in heaven that still hears and still answers prayers. I don't know what you need today, but call him up and tell him what you want. And if you'll call unto him, he said, I'll show you great and mighty things that you do not know because there's a God that hears us when we pray. He heard Hezekiah. In fact, every prayer you prayed, they hadn't been lost on the Lord. Those tears you've shed, God hadn't forgotten about those. In fact, if you go to the end of your Bible, Revelation chapter number 8, verse 4, when one of those seven seals is open, one of those seven angels opens up around the throne, the smoke of the incense, and you know what's in that? The prayers of the saints. In other words, every prayer you prayed, every tear you shed, one day is going to be opened up before the throne of God and it's going to rise up before God as a sweet-smelling savor and a sweet-smelling incense. God hears us when we pray. God not only heard him, verse 5, God helped him. The Bible said that he came to him 
in verse 5, he's going to add some time to his life. And this will be the sign in verse 7 that the Lord will do. I'll bring again the shadow of the degrees which has gone down. And the sundial of Ahaz 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. Nobody really knows what happened that day. In fact, a lot of guys have explained it to where they've explained it away. Nobody really knows. But all we know is that God reached down in Hezekiah's situation and God reached that long arm of grace and mercy down and he turned that sundial back 10 degrees. You remember? When Joshua commanded the sun to stand still back in Joshua chapter 11. You remember that? I got to thinking this week, I wonder, Joshua commanded the sun and it stood still and stopped. I wonder if when God set the dial back 10 degrees, I wonder if that brought time back in current. I don't know, but I know this, the same God that created time is the God that controls time and he completes time and he can do anything with time, to time, for time, or in time that he chooses to do. God heard him and God helped him and God will hear you and God will help you. I don't know what you need today, but call the undertaker. He'll hear you and he'll help you when you pray. God heard his prayer. God helped his problem. That dire situation, Brother Harvey, came to desperate supplication. He called on the Lord. I got to thinking I was surprised to find out, Brother Preston, that Hezekiah made it without posting it on Facebook. I was a little shocked to find out he made it without letting everybody else know what was going on. You know why? Because he turned to the only one that could help him in the first place. He turned and he talked to the God of heaven. And God heard him and God helped him. That dire situation, that desperate supplication now came a dynamic salvation. Look at verse 20. Hezekiah says, the Lord was ready to save me. He learned that God is much more ready to answer than we often are ready to ask. I think we're going to get to heaven and find out. A lot of things we missed out on just because we didn't have faith to trust God and to believe God and to ask God. But God says, if you'll call, I will answer thee. And the Lord was ready to save him. Why? Look at verse 14. Because of the person that he looked to. He said, oh Lord, I'm oppressed. Undertake for me. You know what that word undertake? It means to pledge. It means to make a surety. The idea of that word is somebody that would co-sign a loan. Brother Preston, if you went to buy something and you needed a co-signer, then there would be somebody, Daddy, Brother Billy, your mama, somebody that would co-sign that loan. And the co-signer guarantees that if he don't pay the bill, I'll make sure that the bill is paid. That's the idea of that word undertake. In other words, that when my good works wasn't enough to save me, the righteousness of Jesus undertook for me. When my own strength inadequate to get me through, his power undertakes for me. Hey, when I don't have the wisdom and the strength to figure it out, that's when he steps in and he undertakes for me. He's co-signed the loan. He's guaranteed that whatever I have need of, he's going to take care of it. So he's our undertaker. He's co-signed the loan with his very own blood, Brother Dorsey. By the blood of his cross, He's guaranteed whatever you have need of, I'll supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you look in verse number 17, you not only see the person that he looked to, but you'll notice the purpose now that he lives for. Look at him, verse 17. He's grateful. Why is he grateful? He said, because he has cast all my sins behind his back. Lord, we could stop right there and just call recess, as Brother Mays used to say. 
and just shout on credit for about 45. If you have no other reason to be grateful, you can be grateful over the fact that if you're saved, you're not going to hell and Jesus took all your sins and he cast them as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered anymore. Oh, how we ought to be grateful that we've been forgiven and we've been redeemed and we've been set free. Thank God my sins are under the blood of the crucified one. He's grateful because he's been forgiven. Then in verse number 19, he's joyful. Not only is he grateful, now he's joyful. He says, we will sing my songs to the stringed instrument all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. You know what he's saying? Hezekiah was saying, God, you've been good to me. You saved my life. You've added to my days. Lord, I'm going to live the rest of my days giving you praise and giving you glory for how good you've been to me. I know it's hard to do that in this day and in this hour, but I remind you this morning, if you had COVID, you're still here, you got reason to praise him. If you're here this morning and you never got COVID, you got reason to praise him because he's protected you. With or without, we all have reason to be grateful and to be joyful because God has been good to us. I read an article years ago, Prince Edward, when he was the king of England, after World War I, they brought all those wounded soldiers back to a German hospital. Prince Edward was so moved by their sacrifice, there were 36 soldiers that were taken to that German hospital, Brother Larry, and these 36 were really so bad that other hospitals couldn't do anything for them, so they sent them to this German hospital with all these specialists and all these, these doctors that could help them. These 36, Prince Edward got word about it. So he went to Germany and he visited that German hospital to thank those 36 men that had given their life. He had visited one after another, after another brother Jerry, and finally he had visited 34, 35 of those men. And Prince Edward, they were getting ready to lead him out so he could leave. And he said, oh no, I came to see 36 men and I want to see all 36. They begged him, please don't request to see this last man. He's been tucked away down a long hall on the back part of the hospital. He's down there. He's just a bleating, beaten, blooded stub of a man. Please don't ask to. He said, oh no, I come to see 36. I want to see all of them. They finally led him down that long, dark corridor down to a room in isolation, and they opened the door, Brother Harvey. When he looked across the room, he saw just a stub of a man. He said, in fact, if you didn't know that was a human being, you never would have known it. Looked just like a piece of blooded meat that was laying there on that bed. Prince Edward became overcome with emotion, and in fact, he ran across the room, he threw his body and himself on that bloody, beaten, broken stub of a man and he began to weep and all he could say was thank you, thank you, thank you because of your sacrifice and because of your service, we are free. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When I read that one day, Brother Billy, I thought there was somebody else one day that stooped far, far lower and he kissed a far, far worse ugliness than some old blooded, wounded war hero. He came into my darkness. He came into your darkness. He came into my depravity. He came into your depravity. Vile, corrupt, condemned, helpless sinners that couldn't get to God. But he came to where we were and he paid it all and he suffered it all and he gave his life so that you and I could be saved. How we ought to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, I'm grateful. Because I'm grateful, I want to be joyful. You know what 
calling on the Lord means. It doesn't mean that you've lost your will to live. It just means that you don't want to live without him. When you call the undertaker this morning whose name is Jesus, that don't mean you give up. That just means you don't want him walk without him holding your hand. So you call the undertaker. You know what's so amazing about this undertaker? Jesus, one day, he's going to go from the undertaker to the upper tank. One day, he's going to dig you out of the hole in the ground, and he's going to take you to glory through a hole in the sky. So from life to death, doesn't matter what you got going on today, there ought to be one call you make, and it's not 911. Y'all just go ahead and call the undertaker and say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, would you undertake for me, do for me what I cannot do. And then when he does it, y'all to thank him and y'all to praise him and live your life for him the rest of your days in gratitude how good he's been to all of us. All God's people said amen. Heads are bowed. Miss Angie, come. Come to the piano this morning. We're going to sit, just have a verse played. This morning, Miss Angie's just going to play a verse. How about Jesus paid it all? Just play a verse of that. He did pay it all. If you're here today and you're lost, you're watching today, and you don't know Jesus Christ, he paid it all. Not so you could go to hell, but so you could trust him and go to heaven. He paid it all. He shed his blood to pay your sin debt. All you have to do is believe and trust him. Maybe you're here today, you're saved. Maybe you're watching, you're saved, but you need the Lord to undertake for you. You may be going through... I do know this. You'll call the undertaker. He can help you. He can step into his world and get in your world and do what nobody else can do. Why don't you call him up today? Won't you make that call? Say, Lord, undertake for me. God, help me. God, strengthen me. God, touch me, whatever. Lord, undertake for me. I'm glad to report to you this morning, this is just but one example of the times that God will undertake for us. He'll help us. He'll strengthen us. He'll turn, take what's wrong, and Make it right. Take what's broken and put it back together. He'll undertake on our behalf. Father in heaven, I pray you'll take the word of God now. I pray you'll seal it to every heart, every life. God, I pray you'll undertake for those today that are in need of divine help. I pray now you'll do what only you can do. And I pray as they call out to you, I pray you'll show them great and mighty things that they don't know. God, we go ahead and give you thanks and praise and glory for what you're going to do because we ask it in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed while Miss Angie plays. Maybe you need to come and call the undertaker this morning. Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, I need you to undertake for me. You know what's going on. I can't fix it, but I know you can. I can't turn it around, Lord, but I know you can. Lord, you know my need. If you don't meet my need, it won't be met, so would you undertake for me? Maybe you need to come this morning and just put a call in to the undertaker. I'm glad to report he works even on Sunday. He'll undertake for you. He'll help you. 
While we wait this morning, if the Lord nudges your heart, we'll wait just a moment. And if you need to come, you come while we wait. Sing that chorus, you know what most of you do. Jesus paid. messed up. I feel like I've messed up as much or more since I've been saved than I did before I got saved. We all do. But you know why? There's a desire to serve him. There's a desire to try to live for him. There's a desire to try to be faithful to him. You know why? Because of what he's done for me. He saved me. He redeemed me. Bought me with a price. And I believe if he went through all that for us, the least that we can do is live our life for him. For all the days that we have left, live every day in light of the fact Jesus is either coming or we're going to leave here. You know what I do know? I know that I'm one step closer today than I was yesterday. One day closer to the return of the Lord, Brother Terry, or to draw in my last breath, whichever one, I know I'm one day closer today than I was yesterday. You know what else I learned? I can't do anything about yesterday. But I do have a little say-so in today. I can serve him today. And why? Because he took our sins and he put them behind his back and he forgave us and redeemed us and we ought to be grateful and we ought to be joyful and not only to take you to heaven but if you need any help while you're here you can call the undertaker and he'll help you how do you know preacher because I've called him quite a few times I've called him up brother Larry and he's come to where I was and did for me what I couldn't do for myself. I say praise the Lord this morning. He's been good to us. Amen? Thank God. You know what we're going to do now? We're going to do something we hadn't done in two weeks. We're going to take up offering. And you know what else we're going to do? We're going to be happy about it. The Lord loveth a, not a tearful giver, a cheerful giver. You know why we ought to give? Because he gave. You can't outgive him. Praise the Lord. Come on ahead, Brother Matt. You ushers, you come on ahead. Let's receive the Lord's tithe and our offering. Thank you, Lord, that we have something to give. Amen. Praise the Lord. You give this morning as given to the Lord who's blessed you, been good to you, and then we'll give you a few more announcements before we're dismissed this morning. All right, Brother Harvey, if you would pray for the offering, please, sir. Yes, Lord. Please, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come morning, the midnight. Come morning, there will be glory. Mm. 
Well, how many of you glad you come this morning? Praise the Lord. I appreciate you listening. I'm being honest. I told Miss Kim, I'll just be honest and tell you, uh, my faith was a, probably a little weak this morning. I thought we might have a handful. And I appreciate uh, those that have come out this morning. I understand what's going on, and there are those that can't be here. But I know there are others that are kind of spooked uh, by this latest round. So I didn't know. I thought it may it might be Miss Kim, and I figured Brother Jerry would come because BJ probably kicked him out of the house, amen. So he'd need somewhere to go, but I didn't think we'd have near this many this morning. And so I appreciate you being faithful and coming to the Lord's house. Here's how we're going to leave today. Uh, if you fellowship with people, that's up to you. I'm just, here. here's where I'm at. If you get it by shaking hands, now nobody that I know shakes hands and, and does all that and then rubs their mouth. And most of us wash our hands. And if you get it by touching, then how many of you went to the grocery store this week? I guarantee you that can you put in your car, it's been touched about 150 times before you ever got it home. So if you can get it by touching, then we, we're, our houses are full of it. Somebody say amen right there. But if you want a fellowship, that's up to you. I'm just saying, if you don't, if somebody doesn't shake your hand, don't get your feelings hurt. Don't be offended by that. You know, if they bump or they wave or blow a kiss, whatever, don't get your feelings hurt because somebody don't run up to you and hug you today. I get it. I understand it. But if you do that, that is up to you. We're just not going to have a normal fellowship time right now like we normally do for a week or so. But if you want to take it on yourself, then that is totally up to you. Tonight at 6 o'clock, we will gather back here. Some have said that we have in church, it's Labor Day weekend. I understand it's Labor Day weekend. I know that. But it's also Sunday. Sunday's the first day of the week. Sunday commemorates and celebrates that he got up out of a grave. So, Lord willing, we'll gather back here tonight at 6 o'clock. If you're able and willing and you don't feel sick or show any signs and symptoms, we would love to have you gather back here with us tonight at 6 o'clock. If you do not feel well, I hate to have to, because I, I, I want everybody to come, but if you don't feel good, stay at home. It's just kind of common sense, isn't it? If you don't feel well, run the fever, coughing, whatever, just stay at home. We'll live stream, but if you feel like it, tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll gather back in the Lord's house and worship him again. Why? Because he's been good to us. He deserves. He's worthy, Brother Larry. And we ought to be grateful. And when we come back tonight, we ought to be joyful. Shouldn't walk through the door. Well, I can't believe that preacher having church on Labor Day weekend. I can't believe. And, and granted, if we hadn't been out the last two weeks, I might have considered it. But we need to get back in the swing of things. We do. And uh, so we're going to be here tonight at 6 o'clock. I hope you're in your place. And uh, pray that we'll have a wonderful time in the Lord again tonight. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. You've done what you needed to do today. Well, if you need help this week, you know who to call. Call the undertaker. I'm not talking about the funeral home undertaker. I'm talking about the man whose name is Jesus. He'll undertake for you. He'll help you. Praise the Don't you agree that if he's God enough to add 15 years to somebody's life, He's God enough to pretty much do anything that needs to be done. I don't have the power to do that. But God can. And so if he can control those things, Brother Jerry, I think he can take care of us. I believe he can. So call him up. The old song says, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. And call the undertaker and he'll help you. All right, let's all stand together. Tell you what we're going to do. As we're dismissed, I'm going to ask this section here to my immediate right. Well, I'll tell you what let's do. Look, we'll just divide it down the middle. We'll let this section go out first, and then when they get out, 
we'll let this section follow in. If you go out the side door, main door, whatever, try to keep traffic down. But I hope you have a good day. It's a beautiful day. How many of you like these cool mornings we're having? Praise God. What a wonderful time of year. Praise the Lord. And I hope you'll be back in your place tonight. Pray you have a good, good day in the Lord. All right, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. And uh, Brother Billy, Zom Prowley, pray for Brother Paul. He's on the radio today, so pray for him. I appreciate him running everything up there. I was watching him. He's going back from just back and forth from the soundboard to the camera. So I appreciate him being up there and taking care of all that. So pray for him today as he goes and preaches on the radio. Brother Billy, remember the ones we mentioned and dismiss us, please, sir. Yes,